Our natural humidification is when we breathe through our nose um, because this filters and warms the air that we breathe in and makes sure that it's got enough humidity in for us to, to breathe effectively. When children have a tracheostomy, it bypasses their natural humidification system because the children aren't using their mouth and nose to breathe. Because of this, we need to help them with that and give artificial humidification. If we don't do this, then their secretions can get really thick and sticky um, and lead to um, the tube becoming blocked, which then means we have to do an emergency tube change. In children, when they have a tracheostomy in, for the first seven days, we need to provide them with warm humidity. Now, this will either be warmed air or oxygen if they need the oxygen. After the seven days when the child's had their first tracheostomy tube change, um, children can come off the warmed humidity. But if they're requiring oxygen above two litres, they may need to stay on for longer. So when they're off the warmed humidification, there are several other types of humidification device we can use. And um, these are referred to as a HME, um, but are also known as a Swedish nose. There's the firm event T, which is for children over 10 kilograms. There's the mini humid event for babies under 10 kilograms. And then there's also um, a HME where you can administer oxygen through this. But this is just if they're needing two litres or less. But as well as the HME devices um, that attach onto the tracheostomy, there's actually a tracheostomy bib that we can use. It works in the same way. It traps the moisture that the child breathes out. But this covers the tracheostomy tube, which some parents prefer. Every child's secretion management differs um, and sometimes the HME um, isn't enough to keep the secretions loose. So you can give saline nebulizers. These can be given as regular as needed, but does differ from child to child.